Hello everyone, thank you for this opportunity to speak to you about the SPHERE project in Sierra Leone, known as ACED, which stands for Assuring Quality Higher Education in Sierra Leone. My name is Hannah Lewis, I am the project and MEL manager working under King's College London, based in King's Sierra Leone partnership in Freetown in Sierra Leone. The project director, Mr Samuel Weeks of the University of Sierra Leone Census Apologies, because because of our uh, visits to the various universities in the country, we're, we were unable to work on this video together. Today, I'm going to explain a little bit of the background of the project before answering three questions. The first relates to the importance of the concept of collaboration and partnership to our success. The second asks how we can navigate relationships with international partners as a Sierra Leone led project. And the third asks how the project approached the challenge of uh, the transition from education to employment. So Assuring Quality Higher Education in Sierra Leone or ACED SL is a partnership of seven higher education institutions, the Tertiary Education Commission and five national and international technical partners led by the University of Sierra Leone. In its little over three and a half years, it has sought to establish high quality, relevant and outcome based education across the national higher education system through first engaging employers, students, regulatory bodies and other industry experts to improve the relevance of curricula and readiness of graduates for the job market. Second, the pioneering of a robust internal quality assurance system through project trained staff within HEI and an external quality assurance system through project, staff, uh, project trained staff in the Tertiary Education Commission, which is the regulatory body for higher education in Sierra Leone. This also involved the creation of a postgraduate diploma in QA, as well as guidelines, handbooks and manuals on quality assurance, curriculum reform and improved teaching learning and assessment practices, which included the creation of a national qualifications framework for tertiary education. And finally, the revision of eight pilot degree programs in health, engineering, commerce and management and agriculture. These four sectors constituted what we called clusters. These are groups of academics from across all the HEIs that work together on all the reforms across the project. The revision of these programs involved significant capacity building of lecturers in new pedagogical techniques, including how to teach critical thinking skills and also in gender diversity and inclusion issues to improve the university environment for staff and students alike. So how important have the concepts of collaboration and partnership been to the success of ACED of SL project in delivering on its ambitions? Well, I could tell you that they were incredibly important from my perspective, but a more compelling opinion might come from our external evaluators who recently described the project as a remarkable success and attributed this success first and foremost to the fact that the project was truly and fully Sierra Leonean owned. And it was designed by a group of national masterminds who were heavily interested in seeing the higher education system reformed even before the sphere call for proposals. On reflection, these masterminds are well known and respected within academic circles in Sierra Leone and were able to draw others to them, creating a highly dedicated group that was willing to contribute to the success of the project above and beyond personal advantage. This project was the first time these individuals had joined in such a partnership and initially we faced academics who jealously guarded their curricula due to the highly competitive nature of higher education in Sierra Leone. By now, the story is completely different. The evaluators put it like this, ACED SL clearly managed to create a common bond and a common identity around it across different HEIs in Sierra Leone, but also across HEIs on the one hand and stakeholders or employers on the other hand, not least the TEC, the Tertiary Education Commission. The mechanisms which created this common bond were identified as first the clusters and waterfalling concept, where academics from the same topical area, for example health, would work together to reform a central curriculum, for example the bachelors of pharmacy, in one institution, and then the learning from this would be waterfall to another institution, which would use the same tools and concepts to revise a different program in the same sector. Second, all quality assurance staff were trained in the same postgraduate diploma, which was created through the project. This created a camaraderie between quality assurance staff working in higher education across the country, to such an extent that they are now working on establishing a national association of QA staff so that they can continue working with and learning from each other. 
This the same effect was seen when all lecturers were brought together to learn new teaching, learning and assessment techniques. The common identity and common language that we used was a key to success and allowed for cooperative project management that enabled us to motivate each other in the face of challenges, for example, COVID, as nobody wanted to let down the rest of the team. In the context of the project led from Sierra Leone, how have we navigated relationships with international partners? Well, in my opinion, the biggest success factor for the collaboration of international and national partners, especially in a locally led project, is humility on the part of the international partner. On part of both, but maybe especially on part of the international partner. It may seem obvious, but it's not always easy when international partners may feel like they have the experience and knowledge to lead the way. Humility in this context and learning from local partners is key. When speaking about the local ownership and collaboration on this project, I'd be remiss to mention our rather unique project management circumstances. The project is led by the University of Sierra Leone, but it has grant management support from King's College London through King's Sierra Leone Partnerships, which is one of the four King's Global Health Partnerships. At first, this relationship was very rocky. Despite King's long-standing relationship with the College of Medicine and Allied Health Sciences, which is under the University of Sierra Leone umbrella, the relationship with the wider university was new. This was compounded by low project management capacity on the side of USL at the beginning of the project. King's Global Health Partnerships have a particular approach to our work with champion, uh, which champions partnership and collaboration. Our staff and volunteers work alongside African partners to provide teaching and training, undertaking collaborative research, mentoring and support of health workers, and creating opportunities for knowledge exchange and collaborative learning. Our partnerships are jointly led, recognizing that our African partners have deep understanding of the context in which we operate, of culture, politics, and society. They also have different ways of solving complex problems in low resource settings, as well as low cost solutions from which the UK can learn. In that sense, this project was exemplary for us at King's because once a project director was appointed by USL, which improved project management capacity significantly, we were able to overcome the initial road bumps and work smoothly in partnership with the University of Sierra Leone to enable them to achieve their vision for what they had proposed as solutions to some of the major problems in, Sierra, in the Sierra Leonean higher education system. In terms of the other international partners, we also worked with INASP and the University of Illinois, both of whom had pre-established relationships with individual partners before the project. Both worked with us on capacity building for lecturers, which significantly improved the reformed curricula by providing lecturers with knowledge and skills to implement the improved programs. Both partners have different approaches to working with participants, but the common thread was a move towards training of trainer models and locally taught content. This was in part enforced by the travel restrictions resulting from COVID, but had the wonderful result of further spread of the trainings throughout the universities, led fully by Sierra Leonean academic staff. In this case, the mentoring and reactiveness of international partners was highly appreciated and local partners were empowered by the international partners willingness to reduce their visibility in the subsequent trainings, allowing local facilitators to own the content for themselves. So how has the project approached the challenge of the transition from education to employment? And how can the right stakeholders be engaged effectively to support this objective? Well, the challenge for us here initially was the disconnect between the world of academia and the world of work. Curricula were misaligned and outdated and graduates were not prepared for work. The project created a skills development network, which was essentially a network of employers and experts that was consulted on the curriculum as a whole, the content of individual modules and the skills gaps that they see in new graduates. The feedback from the skills development network was then fed into the revision of curricula and into the capacity building of lecturers, allowing skills like problem solving, creativity and teamwork to be addressed by lecturers throughout the degree programmes and giving students more opportunities to practice these skills. The content was also revised to make it more context specific, for example, Sierra Leonean accounting standards taught instead of the British standards, and also to make the curriculum more up to date, for example, using updated software and techniques in electronic engineering. Once these feedback ties were established between industry and academia, it was felt that they needed to be strengthened in order for them to become self-sustaining. We felt that professionals, academics and students had a lot to offer each other, but we needed ways for them to see those benefits. 
We set up work, um, sorry, excuse me. We set up networking events for each cluster where academics and stakeholders would come together, meet new people and put their heads together about the problems they could solve together. We introduced the idea of guest lectures, which in Sierra Leone were already happening, but usually they were large events that created a high financial burden on the hosting institution, as the guests were often paid for their time as well as their travel costs. We introduced the idea of guest lecture as being a regular and low cost way for students to interact with the world of work. Guest lectures were never paid, but many enjoyed the experience so much that they have continued to engage with the HEI. One example is Mr. Kabia, the CEO of Kabia Farms, a large agricultural company in the country. Mr. Kabia recently spoke to 167 agricultural students at Njala University. He inspired these students about the potential to build successful businesses themselves out of farming. Following on from his lecture, many students were keen to try these ideas out for themselves. So Mr. Kabia is now working with Njala to develop a student farm so students can learn about all the aspects of an agriculture business and gain practical experience. They will be using seeds from Kabia farms and selling their resulting produce through Kabia. This will generate income for the students to help pay their tuition fees and give them insight into the potential of working in agriculture. And some of them could potentially get jobs with Kabia farms at the end as well. So I hope I have given you a good overview of our project and spoken to some of the things that you are interested in. I will hopefully be available for Q&A at the end. Um, so I look forward to speaking to you in person. Thank you.